From the vantage point, Mafatu saw six war canoes drawn up on the beach, but what held the boys' eyes in awful trance were the figures, the eaters of men, cannibals. Mafatu watched the strange scene, powerless to move. In that very instant, he heard a crashing in the undergrowth. Four figures were tearing through the jungle. He turned and ran blindly down the trail, thinking only of its canoe. If only he could reach it before the savages overtook him. Explore new worlds. Find out what happens next by reading the book Call It Courage by Armstrong Sperry. For other great book ideas, visit literacy.gov. A message from the Library of Congress and the Ad Council. Take a look at it. Okay, so I'm about to play my my five songs of the night that I need to play. But before that, well, first of all, we just want to encourage people to call in if anyone has strong opinions, strong about opinions, Bitcoin, questions, Bitcoin, neurobiology, neurobiology, hacking, life, <laughs> music, <laughs> anything, radio. Um, but anyway, um, but before we play these songs, we just wanted to mention that you met. Uh, Dread Pirate Roberts is mom. Dread Pirate Roberts started the website, The Silk Road. A lot of a lot of people have heard of that site, but it was a uh, it was a billion dollar free online market and the dark web that would allow you to buy and sell goods anonymously and safely. But I met his mom, and did you uh, meet her here at South by? No, I met her at the Bitcoin conference yesterday. Okay. There is a there is a here con- in Austin. There is a conference here in Austin at Circuit of the Americas Speedway. And uh, his mom was there to try and, and to try and find some support for her son, who is currently imprisoned oh, wow. in New York and uh, is having a very tough life, even though he's, he's become a yoga teacher. And apparently a lot of the prisoners like to come to his yoga class. You know, that's, wow. that's really what I was sort of referring to earlier when I said it's a, it's a scary world out there. Yeah. You know, the people who... Mm-hmm. make really big breaks they're in jail they're in prison um people who are innovators and who aren't in my opinion doing anybody any wrong mm-hmm. and uh i don't know it, it makes me feel like a like a pawn or something like oh i can i don't know it's it's not a good feeling Th- there's a spectrum about it but you have to be you have to decide not to be pushed around by your own fears even mm-hmm. even if the policeman in your head there there's people there's authorities that will punish you for stepping out of line jesus is a a, a very good example of somebody who was murdered by the political structure that they had he was sentenced for the crime of trying to mm be a king or I, I can't I can't quite recall but he but there was an angry mob that wanted him killed and anyway the power structures that were in place were threatened by it and therefore incentivized to go ahead and wow it backfired with with Christianity apparently uh-huh. but and hopefully with Dread Pirate Roberts Ooh. I, th- I think that it will there's more than 20 websites just like the Silk Road some of them much better and much better at what makes them better the biggest thing about running these markets is at since you don't know who the administrators really are they might be the type of people that would run away with funds that are held in the site in escrow the funds that are in transit between the buyer and the seller mm-hmm. and it's happened more than four times but there's a new website called the marketplace and uh, it's been programmed by hackers that are very good ones that so the the uh, website owners do not actually touch any of the money wow. it, it's it, it's all from the buyer to the to the seller and i take it the money is in bitcoin yes currency. it can it, it's only possible with bitcoin because in the bitcoin program they have a special feature that's been there the whole time there's a lot of special features in bitcoin that haven't been used yet but there's a special feature that allow it's called multi-signature transactions it it allows there to be an escrow service that doesn't uh doesn't require any one party to actually hold the funds they can they can use what's called cryptographic signatures Mm -hmm. to uh objectively write to say what their opinion is about this so if for example you have a transaction where there are three parties there's a buyer a seller and then the broker as long as any two of the parties are happy with the way that the money is going to go then you you have a resolution sort of 
So if the if the buyer sends the money and the seller says I accept it, then any two signatures out of the three parties will be will be good. By the way, um, I decided that you know why stop this conversation? We can just have some music. Yeah. Um, oh, can, and you can knock you know, out your list this way, so I can have my required music and um, the background to this is um, some dub. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was uh, it was also playing when we were talking Ooh. about Jesus. I think it fit very well. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> the the reason I stopped talking about Jesus was because it turns out Dread Pirate Roberts was for I think he he was he went to high school here in Austin. I forget the name of the school, but he he certainly grew up in Austin. So there 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 is the potential Homegrown. for people that you may know. Or you might even be a person who has high aspirations yourself. It could even be you. Of of doing something world changing. And something mm. that I think is ultimately ultimately for the better, for the evolution of the way that we exchange. It it, it was an incredibly peaceful website. And and most of most of the violence that came in was actually started by the police. Hmm. It's a shame. So this is the this is the fall of, of Silk Road that you're talking about? Yeah, it's uh I think Ross Ross Ulbrich was his name. He was arrested in Oct- around October seventh, I think it was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He was in California at the science fiction section of his local public library really yeah did Uh, that go down the same time they took silk road down was it some big yeah same time swoop try and coordinate everything and that was the uh fbi and the other alphabet u.s agency there was the there is ice there is the dea the fbi the atf get everybody involved I, the IRS, I think, uh, Homeland Security, the and the Secret Service, they were all there. Mm-hmm. Wow. And um, did now from the fallout of that, did they did they seize the money that was in transit on Silk Road as well? Yeah, it turns out that the FBI took all of the money, and that and in Silk Road's history, that was the only time they experienced a. Uh, any theft or a security flaw that the, and the FBI has not released any of the funds just because you had money in a wallet at that site doesn't mean you were going to do anything with it at all mm-hmm. it's it's just a place to hold the funds but they definitely stole millions of dollars from people and I don't think they're ever going to give it back and nobody wants to really ask for their share back because they're afraid because they're afraid mm. they're afraid of getting in trouble even though most of them didn't necessarily do anything wrong and absolutely you could not prove that they had engaged in some willful act of violence mm-hmm. and but what this is a this is a what could be a legendary court case it's it's it will be a landmark case it'll be the first court case <laughs> about something that will be happening more and more no matter what the no matter what the finding is but people oh, yeah what website people making websites that allow people to freely exchange mm-hmm. goods over the internet and and when i say freely i mean freely you know it's it's i don't i can't tell how much average people hear about this stuff because i i hear about it on a fairly regular basis but it's just mm-hmm. because i live in the like weird co-op yeah. where there's just and like you're you're at a university campus. I mean, this is a this is a yeah. center for perhaps counterculture or or at least things that aren't necessarily in the mainstream. Um, uh, I think a lot I think a lot of this goes goes unseen to most people, or at least what they what they get is something that's it's biased. I, I, there and was headlines on Yahoo.com about it, but of course they were all very negative. Yeah, when there's a when you do hear about it, there's a yes. Got the media controls everything. They they control the way people think. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I'm I'm completely victim. And to by it the also. media, you mean you mean the the, the select few uh, c- 
conglomerate con- com- <laughs> companies that, that can control it all and, and can can filter it all. The, yeah. the, the nice thing about technology and using a computer, connecting to the internet, you have the ability to broadcast just as much as anybody at CNN does. Mm-hmm. And if you can realize that, then you can start changing culture and, and realizing you're the type of person that makes culture. And, and yes, you're, and you're, engaging in, in that culture f- from others as well. You don't need the conglomerate's version. Yes. You can make your own. It's hard, though. It's so hard to... It has to be done. It We're has doing to. it right now. <laughs> wow. Because you, you can't... You, you can't if you don't like what they're doing, you can't let them win. You have to make something that you think is is better. But, but that's that's when it gets like sad and like and hard because you know when you think hard. of the people who are succeeding mm. doing that, the Silk Road, the um, they're coming for you. They're coming for you exactly. The hacktivists, the WikiLeaks, you know. They're squished. People that risk their lives to uh, make to make the world the way that they think it could be a better way than the way that it's been done in the past. Those are the people that define the way the world will be for future generations. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to do it. You don't have to risk your life all the way. But in some sense, you're constantly risking your life with every passing day. Absolutely, and with every with every passing dime and dollar at, at, the, at the same time and um i wanted to bring it back to uh dread pirate roberts and his cell in new york city and his and his parents um trying to get the, together the money to give him the best defense possible in this landmark case so um what was the website people can go to to find out more information and perhaps donate some bitcoin donate some cash the the website is free ross.org free ross.org mm. And I'm I'm really curious. Do you have a, a blog or a website? Because I really like your ideas. I want you to be my media source. Mac is on the internet. Some. I I uh, I, I, I do I do a lot of internet things. I have a video blog. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Which hasn't been updated for a while, but I I'm going to update it soon again. Do you um? It's on YouTube. On YouTube. Okay. It's it's called the Caster. The Caster. Okay. Yes, I have to say as a um. As an audience member of, of you know, M- Machiavelli's YouTube work, the caster, it, it's it's really fantastic. It's it's again a product of this age, very uniquely this age. It, it, it's a chronicle of your development. I mean, you've had this since you were what fourteen. Yeah. And so you may not be posting um, frequently currently, but but in its totality, it's it's a it's a very thorough record of your intellectual development. I mean, you're, you're clearly an interesting person now, so it's, I mean, yeah, it's weird. And I myself have, have um, troves on the internet from when, when I was a developing youth. Um, things about my, my, like, initial ideas on, on anarchism and, and all sorts of um, intimate things. We're in a new age of recording and promoting and now we have this and this uh is being recorded perhaps to mm-hmm. be available on Definitely. your video blog i will mm-hmm. i will i will put this on the internet and i'll give you guys a copy of it and then hopefully i can edit down a version that won't be two hours long that will be accessible mm-hmm. to sure. people who don't want to listen to something for two hours oh um hold on a sec i also publish a newsletter Oh, yeah, that's some good stuff. Um, guys, I need to say that KBRX 91.7 FM, in accordance with federal law and FCC regulations, confines the broadcast of indecent materials to between the hours of 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. Sensitive listeners and children are advised to tune out during this time. Mm. And now some Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> In Austin, we have a, another unique resource along these lines um, with our independent bookstores. Uh, I remember, Mac, you had mentioned you spoke to some people from Brave New Books, which mm-hmm. I believe is on uh, Guadalupe, right near campus, um, in a basement. Very, very cool little place. So well, they were at the Bitcoin conference. 
Yes, the, uh, let's see, I think the guy's name was... <sighs> no, it wasn't Daniel. At first I thought it would be Daniel. But <laughs> but I, 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 I talked to him for enough minutes to decide uh -huh. that I definitely wanted to come to this bookstore and see what was going on. They take Bitcoin at the bookstore. Really? And uh, they're also having Cody Wilson come in on Sunday. They have lots of events where people talk and uh, hang out there. Oh, that's that's good. That's but Co Cody Wilson is a well-known figure in some anarchist communities because he created the 3D printed gun. You can actually download uh, Ooh. guns mm -hmm. and I don't print like them that. at home. I don't like that. It's a fear of many people. 3D printed technology allows, uh, you know, new frontiers of home creation, all kinds of things, including things that can be used to harm other people. But all sorts of things can be used to harm other people. And yeah, I'm I'm torn about that one. Mm -hmm. My my initial gut reaction is like no. Yeah. And then I I analyze it and I have lots of conflicting. What don't you like about it? I just don't like guns. Mm -hmm. I just don't like guns. And so this would be this would be a gun that doesn't have a serial number that isn't isn't mm -hmm. linked to anybody isn't isn't traceable and it could even theoretically be dissolved in water after you finish using it. Yeah. You could just throw it in a pool of water and it would dissolve. Yeah, I'm I'm going to play this this song while we contemplate dissolvable printable guns. Mm. <laughs> Please, um, any any callers, if there are any yes. last minute, if there are any callers, I want to hear from the. I, I don't even know if anyone's listening. I don't believe you. <laughs> you must have opinions. What I, is the phone number? Five one two four seven nine. Wait, let me check. Five one two four seven nine four seven five, five eight nine five. Five one two four seven nine five eight nine five. And the last four digits are KVRX. Let me let me just check and make sure it's not. It's five one two five nine. Four, four. <laughs> Did we say that in the bookstore? Brave new books. Brave new bookstore. books. Brave new books. I mean, goodness. I mean, this is a college radio. There has to be college students listening, and it is so close to campus. From what I remember, it has to be. We're on campus. It, it, it's probably just a like. Oh no! Oh, the bookstore. Distance. The bookstore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you were talking about something. But we're else. in the thick they should, of it. They should and take it's out right an there. ad on this on this radio station. They should. Brave new books. Oh gosh. <laughs> All right, here's a song. Yeah. Everyone, everyone go to Brave New Books and please call us. I know, you know, most of the callers are usually closer to 3 a.m. Now we're encroaching on 5 a.m. Mm. But Different if you're crowd. listening, even if you don't have an opinion on Bitcoin, just call and tell us you're out there. It's 512-495-5879. FreeRoss.org, an Austin native. I'm so, sitting in a room. I'm sitting in a room. Very important recording that was made uh, a long time ago. There, there was. It's just this guy that's saying this like sentence or two, and he he speaks it into a voice recorder. He just describes I'm sitting in a room different from the one that you're in, and uh, what what he does is he replays that voice recording into the room. And then he records that, and then he plays that one, and then he records the second time. So if you listen to the entire uh, track, you hear the development in succession, more and more layers from the original, more and more steps away. Yes, but even more difficult to understand maybe is that because the same recording is played in the same room, over and over again and each time it's it's sort of like replayed 
you, th you begin to hear the room itself rather than what he's saying. Mm. Mm. And by the end of the recording, it's something, you're listening to something completely different. And when was this done? I just want to say that what is playing right now is very, very creepy. I know you guys can't hear it, <laughs> but this um, conversation and anyway, it's continue. wonderful. It's I mean, it's four forty-five a.m. What else should there be? When when do we the the morning crowd doesn't start until at least five thirty? This is the dark and creepy hour. I am sitting in a room different from the room that you are sitting in. I'm sitting in a room different from the room that you are. That you are. Can we hear it, Sally? Uh-huh. I'm sitting in a room different than the room that you are. Can I try? Yeah. I am sitting in a room different from the one that you are in. This is the truth. We are sitting in rooms different and when this is recorded and played back we're in a different time we're in a different place but we are reaching out and the core of our humanity of our essence is still being communicated through technology and this just ties it all full circle back to when we first got here and tied in technology to being part of the spirit mm -hmm. it is crazy when we think that you know i was talking to my friend the other day about um there was some facebook thing going around talking about you know why you shouldn't drink milk and it said you know <laughs> drinking milk from another mammal isn't natural and she's like no we're nature we did it so therefore it's natural and I was like, okay, well, with mm -hmm. that argument, it's also natural to cut down the rainforest. Right, the evolving she, definition of environment. And she was like, she was like it is natural mm -hmm. to cut down the rainforests. Natural doesn't mean good. And what was, oh, yeah, technology is natural. It's just weird that everything is natural. It's just this word mm -hmm. that we have, I don't know. Yeah. S something strange that happens with technology is that every successive generation tends to view any of the technology that was developed before them as like normal reality and whatever is the newest thing they think is technology like ev like even a long time ago language itself the way that we used words and coded messages to exchange experience across space and time when before animals did not speak very clearly and specifically but at, there was a time when language was the newest form of technology. Do you think, do you imagine someday that we will have technology more implanted within us, like sort of the whole sci-fi-esque brain chips kind of thing? I mean, we have people walking around that already have um, a substantial aid to their bodies from machines they carry with them. I mean, whether it's a pacemaker or uh, some other type of internal uh, regulatory system or, or, or people that have those, uh, those you know, wonderful um, prosthetic limbs. And we're augmenting the, the human body constantly and, the, and not to even to mention uh, on aesthetic levels um, with, with everything we do to our, our hair and our eyes and our et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's so much demand, uh, to, for that frontier to be explored. People want to look, they want to look like how they choose and they want to experience the world how they choose and they don't want to die and they don't want to feel pain. So I could say two things about what you said. Okay. One is, uh, that with drugs, like pharmaceuticals, any type of any type of medicine, any type of thing that we eat or consume that's not meant to be food, mm -hmm. we are cha we're using technology to change something about ourselves, whether it's your blood pressure or something crazier. Mm -hmm. But the second thing was that I think a lot of the fear that comes from uh, bringing technology closer to ourselves, even inside of ourselves, mm -hmm. comes from the idea of not actually understanding how it works. Like, yeah. if, if you put something in your body that you made and you completely understand you have total control over, I think, I think 
you would probably do it for a good reason and you'd be proud of, mm-hmm. of the fact that you did something beneficial for yourself mm-hmm. with that thing that you made. Yeah. If it's something that you don't understand that somebody else is putting in you against your concept of knowledge, mm-hmm. even from birth, then that is terrifying because it's letting something inside you and that you, you don't know. Right, even fewer barriers of control. At least if the outside world is yeah. scary, you have control if your flesh, mm-hmm. your mortal coil is yours. Yeah. I've actually been experiencing a little bit of fear lately as as that sort of goes. I've been like, um, not like super fear, but just a little bit. What is um, it? What are you afraid of? Okay, I'm afraid of... Okay, so basically this past week I've been having trouble breathing, like inhaling mm-hmm. all the way. And um, it's been really annoying me, mm-hmm. but I just so happened the other day while I was cleaning my room to come across a Beware of Chemtrails ah, thing. I was just thinking about this. And I was, it was like listing all the things that are in these supposed chemtrails. And oh, I was just like, oh my God, oh, I can't breathe. Trails. It's because of chemtrails. Ah. Well, there's certainly mm-hmm. all sorts of pollutants in your environment that could be um, causing you to have difficulty breathing. Um, whether <laughs> whether or not chemtrails is the is the prime actor here. I don't. I don't. Seen. I don't really believe that. Well, I don't know. Maybe I do. You know, I, I have to say that I um, you know, I never gave much thought to to chemtrails um, purely because there's only so many things you can give thought to at any given time. And mm-hmm. then I came across some. Um, um, lectures by um, like meteorologists and uh, one by a woman who worked uh, in, in like the OSHA of the of the Navy. So she was a uh, internal regulatory um, person overseeing chemical orders, and and so she had a, another sort of informed insider. Uh, perspective of someone who, who you know, uh, had firsthand experience with these things. I mean, large, large orders of uh, aluminum and what are, what are the other nanoparticles that they say are? They're like uh, barium and mm-hmm. things like that. The, large orders that don't, that didn't come with uh, the documentation that the the other things necessarily came with. You know, it looked kind of like fishy, so she wouldn't approve them and da-da-da. Mm-hmm. And she, she had all sorts of horrible uh, issues, was was threatened by her commanding officers um, to, to stop. And uh, when her, you know, time in the, in the Navy expired, she left, and now she's speaking about it. So when you see those types of things, no matter what mm-hmm. it is, no matter if it's, if it's chemtrails, um, or or uh, any other types of, of weather modification or uh, gosh any any meddling of of agencies in uh, the lives of citizens that are perhaps not fully disclosed. Um, y- you yes you have a, a knee jerk reaction to not want to believe mm-hmm. something like that. Um, it's all just about finding sources you perhaps trust. I'm gonna play something really quickly. Just some of the PSA okay. stuff, but. I like the one I'm about to play. I think it goes well with our conversation. Ever wonder if you can use statistics to model the zombie outbreak? Or what kind of creatures evolve in an Antarctic climate? Or how forensic epidemiologists determine the cause of a deadly disease outbreak? Then tune in to They Blinded Me With Science every Monday night from 8.30 to 9 at KBRX Austin, where we discuss news from all across the sciences. Since 2007, we've featured interviews with a diverse array of researchers, from up-and-coming young scientists to noted luminaries, as well as roundtable discussions of exciting new scientific developments. Join us Monday evening. 8.30 to 9 p.m. for your weekly dose of science on KVRX 91.7. You're listening to KVRX 91.7 where we play all the hippie hoop hop babaloo. Robot mouth. <laughs> Not if you get a robot mouth. You're back on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so chemtrails. Yeah, do you know anything about the psychological concept of projection? Ooh. The psychological concept of projection. That that yeah. brings up a lot of associations. <laughs> um that makes me think of me projecting fears onto other things and other things projecting confirmation bias. <laughs> 
I don't know. I don't know. I think I think chemtrails are an interesting, f- like cultural phenomenon, regardless of if chemtrails are actually uh, entities in the government conspiring to perhaps change the weather or, or poison people or, or run scientific experiments on people who who don't know about it. I, I think that it's interesting to consider, regardless of that. But it's it's sometimes there are certain clouds in the sky that are around for longer than you might think Mm -hmm. and they're caused by airplanes and in the vietnam war the uh, u.s military there are declassified documents which show that they one of the ways they tried to defeat the other side of the vietnamese army was they wanted to make so much rainfall over there using cloud seeding that it would destroy their bridges and mess up all their like wow pathways and make mm-hmm. it really muddy and it, it didn't work very well but but that was a long time you know, ago 40 years ago yeah the, they definitely have the capability to seed clouds that's 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 a well-researched mm-hmm. uh, technique so are you mm, do you have a strong opinion about chemtrails do you I don't. My my interest is in the projection side of it. I feel like mm-hmm. when people see chemtrails yeah. and they and they talk about them and they think about them, it's sort of like a an un, an an unconscious or uncrystallized sense of unease or fear of, about of loss. about other things in their life. Oh. And uh, you once you see chemtrails, you can sort of attach those emotions it's, to yeah, that and construct it's, something. I see if you feeling sick. Yeah, it's all back to the feeling of in control. Right. Um, when when really it's every time you spend a single US dollar, you're you're part of a network that funds that these things that it. you're afraid of. Mm-hmm. It it funds wars in other countries and wars at home and uh, maybe creates social systems that you are not a hundred percent a believer in but there's no other way oh is there not another way i mean there is another way we there have is. we have you who put all of your money into bitcoin but that takes so much bravery and risk mm-hmm. and and courage has its benefits they living as a revolutionary is simply a better way to live i think and uh, if if you take a risk hopefully you're doing it because you think the benefit will be even greater than the risk that you took. Well, say there is someone out there listening right now who's saying, I want to be a revolutionary too. I want to get out of the system. Is that possible with the price of Bitcoin right now? Is that feasible for the average person, the average broke student? Yeah, it doesn't matter what the price of Bitcoin is to you because you don't have to buy an entire Bitcoin to get in. If okay. you want to s- try $50, if you only have $50 and the rest you have is college debt, that's what I had. I I started with debt. And so but how do you how do you buy your groceries? I use I use dollars. Okay. But I I buy food on the internet. There's something called Soylent that I'm I'm interested in. No way. You're going to do the Soylent? No, I already, I bought some, they took Bitcoin, I, I bought them. So bought Soylent a, is, wait, it's, it's, it's like a um, chemically uh, precise uh, um, food or sustenance. It's, it's, I wouldn't even call is it, it like food. Is it like astronaut food? Yeah. What? It, it's, it's been scientifically designed to be exactly what humans need in their nutritional. All of the nutrients, all of the fats, all of the carbs. Da, 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 and that's, that's. Wow, that mm-hmm. and you wow. eat this on a regular basis. Is yeah. this is this you, is this the main part of your simple. diet? I uh, I believe I receive the shipments for it this month. Okay, so you haven't gotten it yet. I haven't gotten it yet. The, although you can go to uh, if you go to Google and type in DIY Soylent, I think the website is like DIYSoylent.org or something. But you can make your own too. Okay. And I I know somebody that tried to make their own it was very messy you can make all sorts of things yourself it just perhaps takes a little bit of practice now i have a poem that oh, yes. uh, is along these lines i want to read before we get yes please it is almost five but time. um the mm-hmm. dj before me actually texted me a little bit ago he slept in and so he might be a few minutes late so 
We might have a little bit of time. He's probably right. listening right now. He he almost always listens on his Aww. way over here. Well, so I there is one person journey. listening. Yeah, no mm-hmm. rush. Be safe. It's South by. It's crazy out there. Could be. Oh, anyway, all right. Sure. So Sally, would you like a um, background tune or just that's okay? Just keep it simple. We've had such we've had such wonderful conversations and the. Uh, no, the thoughts of that are, are resonating here. So I, I, this poem is, oh, well, they all speak for themselves, right? All right, <laughs> make sure you're close to the microphone. Sure. 